Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello and good evening. I want to welcome you to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Julianne Harris and I will be your hostess this evening. We are so glad that you've tuned in tonight and we want to interact with you. So how you can interact is you can go down to the chat section in whatever form you're watching and as you listen to Pastor Rick share this evening, you're going to have questions and we want those questions from you. So then the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program, we're going to get to as many of your questions as we possibly can. So what we want you to do is in whatever form you are watching, we want you to go down to the chat section and type in your questions, okay? So that's how you can interact with us. I also want to let you know that we do these live Bible studies five days a week. Let me go over the schedule. So on Mondays and Fridays, we have live Bible study at 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays is at 6 p.m. And Wednesday is at 7 a.m. And that is on Mountain Time. So please calculate that out. Tune in while we're live so you can interact with us. Now, Tuesday night, is really special. It was the first um, Bible study we started doing. It was just once a week and it was on Tuesday night only before we went to five days a week. So uh, part of what keeps Tuesday night special is that we always have a drawing for a free product. <clears throat> Now, all the products that we give away um, are available for purchase. So if you see the title or hear a title of a book that we're doing a drawing for and you're like, I want that book, guess what? You can purchase those by going to awmi.net slash store or you can give us a call at 719-635-1111. So um, how you sign up, uh, you have to sign up in order to enter into the drawing, okay? So what happens is, is on Tuesday night, we have our Bible study notes. That means that if you sign up, then you will receive tonight's notes that we put together for you. We will send those to you in email format next week, Monday morning. And this will happen every week. So literally every Monday morning, I get an email from Andrew Almack Ministries with last Tuesday's um, email or last Tuesday's notes from live Bible study. So it's really awesome. It's really easy to sign up. You go to awmi.net slash study. You enter in your details. Now, the very first time that you enter in your details, that's when you are entered in to win a free product. You're entered into a drawing to win. And so last week we actually gave away Pastor Rick's, uh, Rick McFarland's book of how to walk in the spirit. And the winner of that was Karen Bowen. Um, and so, uh, Karen, they will be contacting you and getting your address and getting that book to you. I know it'll be a great blessing. And this week's drawing, you will be drawing for Pastor Rick's signed copy of The Riches of His Grace. Uh, another great book that you don't want to miss out on. And I would encourage you, um, and maybe you already have signed up for the Bible study notes. And so you're like, but I really want that book. You can purchase this through Karis, or I would encourage you to go to to uh, riverrockchurch.net and you could purchase this book through there. Is that mm -hmm. correct, Rick? Okay, so go and check out his material. He has some amazing books and you can check out his teaching. I'll introduce him here in a second. Meanwhile, let me keep going through my announcements. So. We have upcoming events. So we have Women Arise coming. That is November the 2nd through the 4th. That will be Carrie Pickett, Audrey Mack, as well as Elizabeth Murin will be ministering. It's for women only on campus. But don't worry, guys, you can still tune in via live stream. So it will be live stream. Then the very following week, we are coming to Atlanta, Georgia for our Gospel Truth Conference. We would love to see you there. So if you are in that area, I would encourage you to go to awmi.net slash events. And you can find out more information about all these events that I'm mentioning. But please come be in person at any of these events. Also, we have Heart of Christmas production coming up one of the most amazing theatrical musical productions that you would ever see, as well as um, it's presenting the gospel. So we always encourage people to bring your neighbor, bring, uh, invite people in your community um, and come here on campus and go to Heart of Christmas. That's gonna be the first part of December. Um, 
Next, we also want to encourage you to be a part of this ministry by giving. You can be a partner and or just give, and you can be a part of everything that this ministry is doing simply by that. And so I would encourage you to pray about becoming a partner. You can go to awmi.net slash give, or you can give us a call at 719-635-1111. Also, we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you are going through something, if you are watching this at some random hour, I'm here to tell you that it is not by happen chance that you are watching this program and that I am um, telling you right now that there is a line you can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week that want to pray with you, want to shed light into your world. So give them a call at 719-635-1111. Um, also, don't forget we have gospeltruth.tv. If you go to your web browser and you type in uh, type it out, gospeltruth.tv, you will be able to watch 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Andrew and <clears throat> Friends. It's absolutely powerful teaching. You never have to turn it. You never have to really like wonder if you're going to hear something that's the theologically off. Um, so I would encourage you to check that out. And I believe that is all my announcements. So I get to now introduce our minister this evening, who is Pastor Rick McFarland. Like I mentioned before, he does pastor a church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, the name of the church is River Rock Church. He has two services currently on Sunday morning, um, and his church is growing rapidly. So I would encourage you, even if you're not in this area, please go to um, riverrockchurch.net and check out some of his archive services. He teaches, he has an amazing teaching style by verse of Verse by verse. I know there's a technical name for that. Expository. Expository? Yeah. Okay, that's the name of it. <laughs> and so I would encourage you to go check it out. And um, he's also one of our favorite instructors at Karis Bible College. So, Pastor Rick, I hand it to you, sir. Well, after that, I'm Ooh. looking forward to hearing me. I know, me that's too. <laughs> no All pressure. Right. Well, tonight I want to talk about the resurrection. And so I think, well, aren't we supposed to talk about resurrection on Easter? Uh, well, yes, we celebrate resurrection on Easter, but as a Christian, we <laughs> celebrate the resurrection every day. Amen. And so I want to talk about just the power of the resurrection. The title of this message is called Resurrection Changes Everything. So let's hop right into the Word. I want you to see in 1 Corinthians 15, 35, that the resurrection changes things. 1 Corinthians 15, 35 says, but someone will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? So Paul's talking in this chapter about the physical resurrection that awaits us. And so again he says, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? And so they were asking Paul, well, if there's a bodily resurrection, then is it going to look exactly like the, the body that was sown into the ground? Verse 36, Paul says, foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives a body as He pleases, and to each seed its own body. What Paul's bringing out here is that he uses an analogy of a seed. And when you put a kernel of seed in the ground, when it comes up, it doesn't look like that seed. Right. It looks totally different. And it's going to be the same thing with the physical resurrection one day. When our physical body dies and we get resurrected, when Jesus comes back, our physical body is going to look different. And so this is not as good as it gets. Oh, wow, Praise the Lord. Really? Well, I don't know about you. For me, <laughs> this is not as good as it's going to get. So I'm encouraged by that. And yeah. so, so uh, again, just like when you sow a corn kernel, it doesn't come up looking like a corn <laughs> kernel. So I want you to see something. When Jesus raised from the dead, He looked physically different yeah. than when He was on earth. Look at John chapter 20. Look at verse 11. Jesus physically looked different after He was raised from the dead and was in a resurrected body. John 20, look at verse 11. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and another at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Just like that's a type of in the Old Testament where you had the Ark of the Covenant with two angels overseeing that was what happened in the tomb where Jesus was laid there. He had two angels sitting there. 
and it says where the body of Jesus was laying. Look at verse 13. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? The angel spoke to her. She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Look at verse 14. Now when she had said this, she turned around, and Jesus was standing there. And she did not know that it was Jesus. She had been around Jesus. Yeah. She knew what Jesus looked like before he died, but she did not know, did not know him because he looked different hmm. after he was raised from the dead. Look in Mark chapter 16, look at verse 12. After Jesus was raised from the dead, he's going to appear to two that are walking to the road on the road to Emmaus. Mm -hmm. I want you to see something in Mark 16, look at verse 12. It said, after that, he, Jesus, appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest and did not believe them either. So Jesus walked with them and they had known what Jesus looked like, but he appeared in a different form. So he looked different. Now look in Luke chapter 24, we're looking at different verses that show us this. Luke 24, look at verse 30. And so again, these are the two to the road to Emmaus. And Luke 24, 30 says, Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. Verse 31, <laughs> Then their eyes were opened and they knew him. How did they know him? It wasn't physically, but when he did communion, they recognized that was Jesus. Mm. And he vanished from their sight. Finally, I want you to see something in John chapter 21, verse 4. He's going to appear to his disciples. His disciples spent three years with him. If anyone knew what Jesus looked like, it was the disciples. Should be. Look at John 21, look at verse 4. And so uh, Jesus was uh, not there, and so they decided to go fishing. So look at tw John 21, look at verse 4. And when the morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Hmm. They saw him standing on the shore, but didn't really recognize him. Right. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? And then they answered, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. So they cast, and now they were not, not able to draw it because of the multitude of fish. And uh, that reminded Peter of something. Right. Earlier that happened to him, yeah. and, and uh, he hadn't caught anything. And Jesus said, You're fishing on the right, wrong side of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Throw it on the right side. Mm, the side. And so when he did, look at verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. Mm. I recognize him. This yeah. is his calling card. And now when Simon Peter heard it, that it was the Lord, he put the outer garment on, for he had removed it and plunged in the sea. So what we're saying is Jesus looked different after resurrection. And so, uh, look at 2 Corinthians 5.16. Paul said that we're not to know Jesus any more according to the flesh, how He was in His earthly ministry, how He looked. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5, look at verse 16. It says, Therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know Him thus no longer. Hmm. And so, uh, again, uh, I believe Paul had actually seen Jesus during his life because he had lived in Jerusalem. And so those three yeah. years he would have saw Jesus. Uh, so he knew what he looked like, but he looked totally different after he was raised from the dead. And we don't know him anymore after the flesh. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to see something. Who was resurrected from that tomb in Jerusalem near 2,000 years ago? Who was that? Well, of course, it's Jesus. But I want you to see something that wasn't only him, but someone else was raised. You were. No. I was. Amen. And so we were not the only one that was raised that day. We were raised with Christ. And we're taken spiritually, not physically, but spiritually we had a spiritual resurrection mm -hmm. where the old man died and the new man came. So look at Ephesians chapter 2, look at verse 6. <clears throat> Jesus wasn't the only one raised. Ephesians 2, 6 says, And the Lord raised us up together with Him and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So believers were raised with Him and in Him. And so His resurrection is also our spiritual resurrection. Mm -hmm. But guys, we still await a bodily resurrection. And so this physical body is going to be transformed one day when Jesus comes back into a spiritual body. And our spiritual body will look just like Jesus's. And so again, we, wait our, we await our bodily resurrection but just as our spiritual resurrection was tied to Jesus, so our bodily resurrection is connected to the physical resurrection of Jesus. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, look at verse 23. Our physical resurrection one day is tied to His resurrection. 
1 Corinthians 15, look at verse 23, it says, But each one in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, after those who are Christ at His coming. So he's speaking again in chapter 15 of resurrection. And so he says, Jesus was the first fruits to be resurrected. Hmm. When you had a crop, you, you brought the very first fruits into the temple and waved it before the Lord, and that was the sign that the rest of the crop is going to be good. Amen. So the first fruits was part of the same crop. Yeah. And so it belonged connected to the same crop, but the first fruits came first. Well, Jesus' resurrection was the first fruits, but we're afterwards of the same crop. Mm. And so we have that, we're, our, our physical resurrection is connected to Jesus's. Amen. I want you to see this in type in, in Joshua. Joshua chapter 3. And in type, we're going to see this. In Joshua 3, look at verse 2. So it was after three days that the officers went to the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it that you may know the way which you must go for you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Verse 6, then Joshua said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant, cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. So the Ark of the Covenant, you know that's a type of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is a type of the Ark of that Covenant. And it says the priests were to bear that ark and to cross the Jordan River, which speaks of death. And so, so as soon as they crossed the river, that river stopped and it piled up all the way back to a place called Adam. Hmm. And wow. so, and so, but how far were the people supposed to be away from the ark? 2,000 cubits, 2,000 spaces back. Hmm. And so in type and shadow, that's Jesus. That's awesome. Jesus died for us 2,000 years ago, and I believe the day is very soon when the rest of the crop, the rest of that resurrection is going to come, and we will enter into that, the, the same resurrection Jesus did at the first fruits. Mm -hmm. And so look at Joshua 3.13. And shall so come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, and the waters that came down from upstream shall stand in a heap. So it was when the people set out from the camp to cross over the Jordan with the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan, the feet of the priests who bore the ark dipped into the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows all of its banks during the whole time of harvest that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam, hmm. the city that was beside Zaraton. When Jesus died at the cross, the waters of death rolled all the way back to Adam. So good. And He took the death, spiritual death of all mankind. Amen. And so the waters that went down into the Sea of Arabal, the Salt Sea, that's the Dead Sea, failed. And so I want you to see in verse 17, then the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. Jordan. All of Israel crossed over. 2,000 paces came. Finally, they crossed over. That's us. <laughs> and so again, his resurrection is connected to our resurrection. We see that at finally in Revelation 20, look at verse 6. It says, Blessed and holy is he who is, has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests unto God and of Christ, and shall reign with Him a thousand years. And so it says, Blessed and holy are those who have the part of the first resurrection. And so our part is the same as Jesus's. He was the first fruit. We're the same crop. Ours is called the first resurrection. Huh. And so we share it with Him. So our bodies, but our body still awaits the resurrection, but our spirit now experiences that life. Amen. We're That's a God. new man. We have resurrection life. We're not like the old man. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, look at verse 19 and 20, that we have resurrection life on the inside of us if you're born again. Praise God. Ephesians 1, 19. It says, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe? according to the working of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His own right hand in heavenly places. Here it's speaking of believers. It says there's a power that works in you. It's the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Yeah. It's resurrection power. And you have that operating in your new spirit man right now. And so spiritually you've been resurrected. 
And, and so you're ready for heaven now. Amen. Just don't go. Amen. You, you're left here to do a great commission. But I want you to see some. Our old man died with Christ and we were raised a brand new man. Amen. Look at Romans 6, 4. Romans 6, verse 4. We're going over quite a bit of scriptures, keeping you busy doing your sword <laughs> drill over here. Romans 6, 4 says, Therefore we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. And so we have that same new life Jesus has on the inside of us. And so just like a seed is planted and the harvest from it doesn't look like the same as the seed, so our old man doesn't look, didn't look anything like our new man. When our new man was raised up, you know our new man looks nothing like our old man. True. But so oftentimes we, we see ourselves still as the old person. Yeah. And we have our mind unrenewed to who we are and we just think, well, we're an old sinner saved by grace. No. And then I'm that same old person, that, that rotten sinner. No, no, no. You are just like Jesus in your born again spirit and you look like Him in resurrection. And so, so let me tell you what your new man looks like. It looks just like Jesus. Yes. Jesus is righteous. Amen. But you know that your new man is righteous? Yeah. It shares that same righteousness with Jesus. Look at Ephesians 4. Look at verse 22. Let's, let's talk about your new man. What's your new man look like? Ephesians 4, 22 says, <clears throat> you're to put off concerning the former conduct of the old man. It doesn't say you need to put off the old man. That's already died. It's the behavior of the old man. Sick. Put the old behavior away. The, old, uh, the behavior of the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and you need to put on the new man who was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. And so you need to put on who you are in the spirit, renew your mind so that that comes on the outside. Amen. Just like clothing, you'd put on clothing that that's identifies you to who you really, really are. You know, clothing identifies uh, every major a uh, job has clothing connected to it. Nurses wear nurse outfits. No, Policemen true. wear police, uh, firemen wear, cowboys wear cowboy clothes. And so <laughs> our new man has clothes that what we're to put on. What do preachers wear? Preacher clothes. <laughs> Skinny jeans and fog machine. <laughs> no, no, Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> I think we digress. Okay, yeah, we did. So the new man has new clothes that goes along with the identity. So, <laughs> but you're a new man on the inside, and your new man looks nothing like the old man because Amen. of resurrection changes everything. Amen. And so you are righteous, the same righteous that Jesus has. You are. <laughs> Next of all, Jesus is holy. Well, so your new man is has the same holiness in it. Amen. Look at Romans 11. Look at verse 16. First, the first fruit is holy. Remember Jesus, the first fruits. Yeah. This is Jesus. If the first fruit's holy, and we know He is, then the lump is holy. Well, praise God, the rest of it's the lump. Uh, I'm not going to call lump. you a lump. No, my lump is holy because Jesus is holy. Praise God. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. Amen. Jesus said, I'm so, the vine, you're the branches. Yes. And so we share the same holiness as the root. That's Jesus. Jesus is without blame. Amen. So is our new man without blame. Look at Colossians 1, look at verse 22. That in the body of Jesus' flesh through death, He presents us holy and blameless above reproach in His sight. Amen. And so because of what Jesus did, He's presented us as, as holy, blameless, and above reproach. Do you believe you're above reproach and blameless in God's sight? Many of you say, oh, no, 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 I'm not. Because you're looking at your old flesh. You're looking at the old man that you used to be. You're not looking at who you are in the Spirit. And so the only way you're going to know who you are in the Spirit is to look at Jesus, because as He is, so are we. Amen. Next of all, Jesus is victorious. He's not up, up on the throne defeated. No, He's up victorious. Guess what? Our new man's victorious. Amen. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, look at verse 54. 1 Corinthians 15, 54. The devil wants to convince you that you're defeated and that you need to get the victory. Yeah. And so, no, but Jesus puts you on the high ground. When you're in the military, you want to have the high ground because it's easily defe defended. Well, when you got born again, you got in resurrection, you got put on the high ground of victory. Amen. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 54. So when this corruptible is put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. But right now your born again spirit on the inside is experiencing victory right now.
So if you're in defeat, you're walking in the flesh. Hmm. You're walking into fear, you're walking in according to what you're seeing. But if you're looking at Jesus, you're going to always walk in victory. Amen. And so I have a question for you. How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? Well, how do you talk about yourself? Because mm -hmm. how you see yourself is how you're going to talk about yourself. Amen. And so do you see yourself as that same old person you were before you were saved? Mm -hmm. Or do you have a whole new paradigm shift in, uh, and you see yourself different because resurrection changes everything? Amen. We are not to see Christ according to the flesh any longer after He was resurrected. Well, the same goes for us. Same goes for us. If we're not to treat Christ and see Him anymore according to the flesh after He was raised from the dead, then why are we doing it? Mm -hmm. And so our resurrection is connected to His and we're a new man. We were raised with Him. And so our new man doesn't look anything like our old man, but we have to have a revelation of what we are in the Spirit. So we can only know our new self by looking at how Jesus is right now at the right hand of God. Look again, I quoted this, but let's actually look it up. Look at 1 John 4, look at verse 17. 1 John 4, look at verse 17. It says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Well, how can we have boldness? Because a lot of people are afraid of judgment day. Right. They're afraid that their sins are going to be shown on a jumbotron. I <laughs> know. No, no, no jumbotron. <laughs> Jesus died for those sins. And so we're going to have boldness on that day. Why? Because when we appear, we'll look just like Jesus. Just like Him. Praise God. Is, is He guilty? No. Is He a sinner? No. Is He cursed? No. No, no, no. So, so let's look at this verse again. Love has been perfected so among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because as He is, so are we. Mm -hmm. And not even have to wait till we get there. You are now. How is that? In your spirit. Amen. You're a new man. Because resurrection changes everything. Hey, praise God. Look at 1 John 3, look at verse 2. <laughs> One day when we get to the other side, and um, before Jesus, if Jesus doesn't come back before that, we're going to go on the other side. But let me tell you something. We're going to see something happen on the other side when we see Jesus. Look at 1 John 3, look at verse 2. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and yet has not yet been revealed what we shall be. We're just looking at our physical bodies. I'm looking at our, our natural selves. We're, yeah. I can't see Julian's spirit. Correct. I can't see my spirit. I can't see your spirit. Right. We're looking at the outside, and so what we're going to be hasn't yet revealed. Praise yeah. God. Praise this God. is not as good as it gets. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> we know that when He's revealed, we shall be like Him. Why? For we shall see Him as He is. So when you behold Jesus, you behold who you are. Mm. And so <clears throat> finally look at 2 Corinthians 3, look at verse 18. God wants you to go through a transformation in your life from the inside out. You've already been transformed in your spirit, but He wants your outward life to come on the same image of what you are on the inside, that it manifests who you are on the outside. Mm -hmm. So how's this transformation going to take place? Well, it's not by willpower. It's not by your self-efforts. It's not by trying to keep the law. No, it's just simply by looking. Yeah. I'm going to show you how simple it is. Look at 2 Corinthians 3. Look at verse 18. This is God's plan for transformation for all Christians. It has nothing to do with your self-effort or, or keeping the law. Look at 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all. See, this is God's plan for all Christians. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. So this mirror, what is this mirror? We're going to find out in the Word. We find out in the Word that the mirror is actually the Word of God. Amen. A mirror is a, actually a type of, uh, or actually what was called a looking glass. Oh, okay. And so you look through it to see something. But in a mirror, a natural mirror, we look at it to see our natural reflection. Yeah. I want you to see this mirror of the Word, you actually go beyond you and you actually see Jesus. Mm. See this, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Who are we looking at? The glory of the Lord. Well, I thought I was looking at a mirror, and a mirror sees your own reflection. Yeah. The only way you can truly see you is to see Jesus. Amen. Because as He is, so are we. Yeah. See, a lot of times we want to say, well, I just want to see what my spirit looks like. I want, Lord, show me what my spirit looks like. Well, He will. Every time you look in and you see Jesus and how He is in resurrection, you, you look through the Word of God and how it betrays Jesus, that's exactly how you are. That's so good. You're looking into that mirror. 
And notice you look into the mirror, the glory of the Lord. A lot of Christians are looking at the glory of themselves. Amen. It's so Don't true. look at the glory of yourself. Oh, don't do it. Look at the glory of the Lord. <laughs> get your eyes off you. Yes. And if you get your eyes on the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, looking through the looking glass of the Word and behold Him in resurrection, something takes place. And you're being transformed, metamorphosis, a change from the inside to the outside. Being transformed by the same image from glory to glory, not glory to glory. Amen. From Amen. glory to glory, just as by willpower. No. It's not your willpower. It's not you trying to change to be like Jesus. You already are like Jesus because resurrection changes everything. Amen. And you've been raised with Him, raised with Him, a, a spiritual resurrection. And your new man doesn't look anything like your old man. But you got to see who you are. And the only way you see how you are is to see how Jesus is. And so, Pastor, that just seems so easy. Just beholding Jesus has a power to transform me? Yes. But, Pastor, I can't accept it. It's just too easy. I want steps. Steps. Yes. Okay. You want steps yes, to the victorious Christian life? Yes. To see transformation in your life, step number one, write it down. Look at Jesus. Step number two, it gets more complicated. Keep looking at Jesus. Step number three is keep on looking at Jesus. <laughs> and as you do that, you're transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of oh, our so God. Amen. Because resurrection changes everything. You have to know that your new man doesn't look anything like your old man. Amen. And so you need to see that. You need to talk differently. You need to speak in line with who you are, and you'll see great changes. So just an action step. I think it's important that you go through the New Testament, especially the letters written by Paul, and find those scriptures that are in him. Mm -hmm. In him, by him, through him, talking about who we are in Jesus. Highlight those. And that shows you who Jesus is and who you are in Him. And you need to speak those things. For instance, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone be in Christ, they're a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are become new. Amen. Verse 21 says that those that are in Him have become the very righteousness of God in Him. Amen. You need to quote those. You need to speak that. You need to say it first person, present tense. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't say I will be or I'm trying to be. Right. No, I am the righteousness of God in Him. Amen. And so again, that's who your new man is. And so renew your mind to that. Speak that over yourself. And when you first say it for the first time, it's like taking a shower with your socks on. Amen. It's very uncomfortable. It's like, Eric. no, I'm lying. I'm lying. No, no. God said it. And God's the author of reality. Humility agrees with God. And so if God says, I'm going to keep saying it, then one day it's going to be here, just a thought and an <laughs> understanding mentally. It's going to drop down here in Revelation. <gasps> I am the righteousness of God. Yeah. And when that revelation comes, your outward life will transform more by accident than ever on purpose. And so can I pray for you? Yes. Lord. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Father, I thank you for those that are listening today. Amen. That they understand now that resurrection changes everything. That just as a seed put into the ground doesn't look like what it comes up out of, out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And so our physical body will look different. Jesus' physical body looked different. But you know what? We've already had a spiritual resurrection where our new man is not the same as the old man. And our new man doesn't look anything like our old man. So, Father, I thank you for showing us Jesus. And as we see Jesus, we know we look just like him. Mm -hmm. And, Father, we we'll renew our mind. <clears throat> we'll be transformed by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Man, that's powerful. And you guys are submitting some wonderful questions, so please continue to do so. So, Pastor Rick, are you ready for some questions? I'm ready. If not, I'll phone a friend. Uh-oh. My, no, my wife's on the line. A friend. <laughs> okay, so Ruthie on chat has a great question. She says, what are some ways to operate with the Holy Spirit to know the power that works in you? Well, I think one of the best ways to operate with the Holy Spirit to get revelation is praying in tongues. Amen. That's it. First Corinthians 14 says when we pray in tongues, we speak mysteries. Amen. And so we're, I think it's not just mysteries about your future, or who you're going to marry. I think it's the mysteries of the Word of God. Because Paul says, I teach the wisdom of God in a mystery. Mm -hmm. So what he wrote was, was the wisdom of God in a mystery. But Paul prayed in tongues more than them all. Yeah. And I believe, how did he get that wisdom and revelation of the mystery? 
praying in tongues. Amen. And so just say, Holy Spirit, help me pray out the mystery and help me under, have that revelation of what belongs to me and who I am in Christ. And start praying in the Spirit. Do a lot of praying in the Spirit. Amen. And then when you open it, it's like, oh, revelation. Oh, I see now who I am. And you can cooperate with the Holy Spirit that way. Amen. So good. Um, uh, Emily on chat says, was Jesus Spirit the Holy Spirit of God or is, they, or is there a Spirit of Jesus and a Holy Spirit? Well, Jesus was fully God yes. and He was fully man. Right. So what makes a man fully man? They're a tripart being. Right. You have a human spirit, right. a human soul, mm -hmm. and a human body. Okay. And so for Jesus to be fully human, he had to have a human spirit, a human soul, and a human body. But the second hand of the Godhead joined and became one. So we don't understand how can fully God join with full humanity. Matter of fact, early in the early church, there were many heresies that would be coming out in the early church. And that early church councils, like the church of the Council of Nicaea, where the Nicene Creed came. And so one of the one of the of the false teachings that was going around there was a man was teaching that Jesus had a human body and a human soul, but he didn't have a human spirit. Mm. And so he his uh, his spirit was the Logos, the second member of the Godhead, and that church council said no, he was fully man and fully God. And so how did Jesus die on the cross? He died spiritually on the cross, but God can't die. But what Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was his human spirit that was cut Amen. off. And so, and so he, he, he experienced what we experienced so that we could experience what he now experiences in resurrection and be quickened with new life. Amen. So good. That's uh, a lot of theology for a short question, but. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Somebody, you can just hit the little button that takes back about 15 seconds and you can listen to it all again. Yeah, you can get pretty much, go to any bookstore and get a book on systematic theology. And almost every, every single one of them has a section on, on the nature of God. That's good. And every single one of them will talk about Jesus had a human spirit, human soul, human body. But the second member of the Godhead, the Logos, came and, and there was a, called the hypostatic union where the two became one. Wow. That's awesome. And so we don't understand how that took place, but full humanity joined with full humanity who was 100% God and 100% human in one person. That's so powerful. Uh, Dodie on Facebook says, <coughs> is every one of us supposed to go out to preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, etc., or do we do those things as lost or sick people come into our life's sphere? Well, actually, Mark chapter 16 is as a version of the Great Commission. We have that in Matthew chapter mm -hmm. 28, yeah. the Great Commission. Yeah. But Jesus said, you know, go forth and preach the gospel and baptize. And it says, lay hands on the sick and they will cover. Lay, you can take up serpents, it won't hurt you. And drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt you. And so it says, cast out spirits, heal the sick. But that was part of the Great Commission. Yeah. It was connected with go preach the gospel, <laughs> go into all the world. And so again, Mark talks about that. And so you don't have to, to wait for them to come across. I think when you go preach the gospel, you run into devils yeah. that need to be cast out. That's it. When you're out preaching the gospel, you find out people are sick. Lay hands, lay hands on them. So you don't have to wait for them to come to you. You go to them because that's called the Great Commission. Amen. So Not the good. great suggestion. Not the, <laughs> even though we hear it as a great suggestion mm -hmm. sometimes, don't we? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so V on chat says, "Will I like this question and I want to hear your perspective. Oh and you can always pass or phone a friend or yeah. whatever. Or make this, you, get, you can get No, <laughs> I have my theories. V on chat asked this question, will everyone from Adam to Jesus be saved? Well, no, I mean, so basically under earth there was... Before Jesus came, there were, there were three compartments under the earth. There was uh, Hades, which was where people went that were unrighteous, that didn't believe in the Lord and suffered. Then there were Abraham's bosom. Those were believers in the Lord. How did people get saved in the Old Testament? Well, people said, well, by the law. Well, the law can't save anybody. Mm -mm. No one, you'd have to keep the law perfectly, and no one did it. Well, by the animal sacrifices. Well, it says the blood of bulls and goats can't, can't remove sin. And so how did people get saved in the Old Testament? The same way we get saved Amen. today. Okay. Abraham believed in the Lord and it yeah. was accounted for righteousness. Yeah. And so there were those that rejected the Lord in the Old Testament and they were in Hades and then the Abraham's bosom. Remember when Jesus gave that parable of the rich man and Lazarus? Yes. The rich man was not a believer. He went into torment. He says, I'm in the flames in torment. 
And it says he saw Abraham. Mm -hmm. He says, now yeah. Abraham was being comforted and Lazarus was being comforted on the other side. Yeah. And so he wanted Lazarus to come over to him. And so, so not everybody from Adam all the way to when Jesus died are going to go to heaven. It's just those that trusted in the Lord. Amen. And they, and they were in Abraham's bosom, but Jesus emptied that and took it up into heaven Amen. and led captivity captive. Amen. Um, so we will, we will, I'm expected to go see Abraham one day and shake say, his hand. Hey, Abe. Hey, Abe. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it in. I want to meet Sarah. I just say it. <laughs> I want to read, I want to, I want to actually meet the Italian prophet Malachi. Oh my Lord, not Malachi. Yeah. Okay, Emily on chat says, does the righteousness of God affect our physical body in terms of healing? Yeah, well, it says in Romans 8, 11, it says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal body. Good morning. Amen. So that very same life in your spirit can be released in your physical body and you can experience the power of God. A zap. A zap. A zap. Yeah. Amen. Well, I, and I think it's understanding that you can't earn your healing. You can't, it was already done. You are the healed resisting sickness. And because you are so right with God, you've never, there's nothing you can do to be wrong with God once you believe on Jesus. That righteousness, that revelation will just allow the healing power to flow through your body. Yeah, because your identity is who you are in the spirit. Amen. You're, a That's human it. being is a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. Yes. We're not a soul. No. We're not a body. Right. We are a spirit. And so who you are in your spirit is your identity. Amen. If you're an unbeliever, you're called unrighteous. Right. But if you're born again, you're the righteousness of God in Christ, in Christ Jesus, Jesus, perfected forever. Amen. And you look just like Jesus. Amen. So good. Um, I like Norma's question. She says, uh, Norma on YouTube says, how do we move the word we have in our thinker to our know that we know knower Yeah. when things don't seem to be changing in our health or our circumstances? Yeah. I think a that's a great question. question. I think the number one thing you can do is meditate the word. Amen. That's it. And so meditation means to deeply think on. And also the Hebrew word means to mutter. Yeah. It means to speak. And the New Testament says Paul wrote Timothy, meditate on these things so your profiting can be seen to all. The word meditate in the Greek means to roll over and over and over. It was used of Greek actors rehearsing their lines over and over so it became a part of them. Yeah, that's good. And so I think it's important to meditate on the word. Go back to the in hymn scriptures. Yeah. Start speaking them first person present tense. You're not saying them to make it happen. You're not speaking at God to get him to do something. You're saying it so it'll go here to... Oh, I am the righteousness of Man, God because so faith comes by hearing and the closest ear, the closest mouth to your ears is your own tongue. Amen. So good. Um, okay. So Jamie on YouTube says, I know my identity and I speak it boldly. Good. How do you, I know, right? How do you not come across as arrogant or self-centered when you talk about yourself as righteous, holy, or blessed? Well, I think it's when, make sure you don't leave the word in him off. Amen. <laughs> Oftentimes, well, I'm the righteousness of God. No, you just lied. <laughs> Amen. No, you're the rights of God in Him. Amen. And I think the flesh kind of takes, takes pride in it when they leave Jesus out. Amen. Religion always leaves Jesus out and makes you Savior. And so when you say, I can do all things, I can do all things. No, you can't. Yeah. I can do all things through Christ who Amen. strengthens me. Don't leave Jesus out of it. And so if you make sure that it's all because of Jesus and what he did and because and, and surely because you sh he shares it with you out of his grace, that's when that's humility can receive that. You get into pride when you leave Jesus out of it. Amen. Um, okay. So let's take this question. Um, Hi King Clouds on YouTube says, can we speak in tongues in our mind? Uh, some I know can, I can't. Yeah. Uh, I know my wife can, and I've heard other people say they can hear it in the inside. Matter of fact, when my wife talks about when uh, people were getting filled with the Holy Spirit, she was like, oh, what's happening? And, and so she actually left the services in the car, and, and her sister had gotten it and was praying in tongues, all exuberant, and you got to get this. And, and she said that she was hearing it so loud on the inside. She says, I, I think I have it. Can't you hear it? Wow. It was on the inside. That's amazing. But I, have, I personally have not experienced to where I actually have to speak out to yeah. speak in tongues, but I have heard people can have that going inside them. Okay. So this is a great question on praying in the spirit as well. Um, Mitchie or Mitchie on Facebook says, how do I overcome the fight in my mind when I pray in tongues? 
Well, I think you can pray. You can actually pray with your mind. You ever thought, well, you, you think to. God will hear yeah. my prayer in my heart? Yeah, God hears your prayers in your heart. Amen. What if you didn't have a tongue? Maybe, maybe you're born mute. Does that mean God couldn't hear your prayer? Amen. No, it said Hannah, God heard her prayer in her heart. Yeah. So uh, her, her lips may have been moving, but there was making no sound, but God heard her heart. Amen. So I like to pray in tongues, but I also like to commune and actually pray to the Lord with my soul. Because it says, you know, I'll pray with my spirit, pray with my understanding because my, my spirit's unfruitful. I mean, I mean, my understanding is unfruitful. Well, make it fruitful. Use it to meditate. You know, you can read the Bible and pray in tongues at the same time. Amen. You need to you yeah. need to pray in tongues really low because the loud. If it's loud, it's you're going to kind of interrupt yeah. the concentration. Yeah. But you can quietly, under your breath, pray in tongues. I do it all the time. Yeah. And I can concentrate and read a book. I can read scripture. Amen. And I can pray in tongues so I can keep my mind fruitful. I can meditate the word, think on the things of the Lord. I can pray in my mind while I pray in tongues. So because good. they're coming from two different sources. Amen. And God's just made it so easy. Uh, so if you are, maybe this is the first time you're hearing about praying in tongues or being baptized in the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. If you have more questions about that, we have prayer ministers that would love to talk to you about it. They can send you a free resource regarding um, getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's the new you in the Holy Spirit. So give them a call at 719-635-1111. Um, also, if you need further prayer, give them a call. And so, Pastor Rick, this was fantastic. Yeah, it was fun tonight. Amen. And so, we have live Bible study tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time, so don't miss that. And um, have a great night. You have a great night, right. Pastor. Bless you. Have a good night. Okay, see you next time. Bye. We get to stop looking at this word as someday. We gotta look at it, it is for now. And the Spirit of God, don't you think is big enough to teach you, to show you how to do things? Stop thinking that one day when I am super spiritual or when I have the money I need. No, start doing what he called you to do right now with the strength you have. So Father, we say yes to that today. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 